Okay, in this video, we are going to construct three quadrilaterals, a kite, a rectangle, and a trapezoid. And in doing so, we're going to, again, use the tools of construction, which is a straight edge and a compass. And uh, in order to construct these figures, we're going to have to utilize different uh, geometry properties and definitions. So let's get started. Let's start with the kite. Uh, as you can see, I've drawn a uh, figure of what a kite is. It's simply a quadrilateral with um, two pairs of congruent sides. Um, and of course, uh, if you notice, um, I've labeled three important characteristics which are going to be um, helpful when we actually construct this. Uh, of course, uh, we have the pair of congruent sides, which we'll use the compass uh, eventually for the lengths. And then uh, the diagonals are perpendicular which is gonna be very helpful when we design this thing. And then lastly, and most importantly, one diagonal bisects the other. So as you can see, uh, basically we just need to draw a perpendicular bisector and from there, we'll probably be able to fill in the rest of the kite. So let's get started. Uh, what we'll do is we'll start uh, by constructing a perpendicular bisector, which is sort of the framework of our kite. So here's uh, our diagonal that's going, uh, which will be a smaller diagonal. Okay, and again, let's draw a perpendicular bisector, and in doing so, let's pick a point in the middle, right here, and construct two endpoints that are congruent. So here's the first endpoint, and here's another endpoint, equidistance from the center. Okay, and then from each endpoint, we will draw an arc above and an arc below. And then from this endpoint, we will draw an arc above and an arc below. And then from the intersection of each of these uh, arcs, we will draw our line segment through them, which will also go through the center of our line segment. Make sure you get that on. So we have ourselves a perpendicular bisector, and these, of course, are going to be the diagonals of our kite. So this is congruent to this. Okay, and then what's nice about this is we know that the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to there. So we may as well make these the lengths of two sides of the kite. There's one, two, and these can be proven to be congruent. And of course, we can do the same down here. Using theorems and geometry, we know that the distance from here to here is going to be the same as the distance from there to there, like this. And there you have it. We have our kite, two pairs of congruent sides. The second figure we're going to construct is a rectangle, and I added a little bit of a twist. Uh, what we're going to try to do is uh, draw it such a way where the width is one half the length of the length. So uh, again, I've noted that a rectangle is simply um, all four of the uh, angles are 90 degrees, and of course opposite sides are congruent to each other. So what we need to do is uh, let's first start with drawing what's going to be the bottom of the rectangle. So we'll draw a straight line segment. And then what we see is we're going to need a right angle. Okay, and as we just saw in the, uh, in the previous sketch of the kite, um, we can just draw a perpendicular bisector. So what we'll do is we'll pick a point on this line segment. And we will draw two endpoints equidistant. There's the first one. And here's the second endpoint. Okay, and then from each endpoint, we will draw an arc above and an arc below. And then from the other endpoint, we'll draw an arc above and an arc below. And then again, we'll take from a draw a line segment through the intersecting arcs, and we have ourselves a perpendicular line. 
and of course that's the corner of the rectangle. Now again what we want to do is we want to have uh, the width be half the distance of the length. And so what we're going to do is we're going to establish what our width is going to be. So again we're using our compass's distance. So we're going to set this as our distance. Okay, and here's one arc. So this is what we're going to call, this is going to be W units. Okay, and so again, here's the arc. And again, we draw an arc up here. This is also W units. Okay, so we have, this is the width over here. And of course, from this arc, we will draw one more length of W. So this is also W, which of course equals the length. So what we've now established is this is one vertex of the rectangle. Here's the second vertex, and here's the third vertex. So basically all we need to do now is just draw another right angle, and from there we will establish that side of the rectangle. And again, as we just saw, to do so we will draw From this center, we will draw two endpoints. Here's one that are equidistant. Here's another one. And then from each of these endpoints, we'll draw an arc above and an arc below. And then from the other endpoint, we will draw an arc above and an arc below. And once again, through the intersecting arcs, we will draw our line segment through the bottom, and we have ourselves a right angle. So again, the length from here to here is 2w, and this of course is the width. And then finally, all we need to do now is take the width that we have from here. draw it over here. And this of course would be the other vertex. Or an even better way would be simply to say, look, I'm not sure if this is the correct distance, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another perpendicular line from this point. Again, an arc here for one end point, and an arc there for the other end point and then an arc below and above and from this end point an arc above and below and then once again we will draw a segment through all this and as you can see it's going to go through this vertex as well and so there's different ways to approach this but ultimately this demonstrates that you use your compass for length, and then you use the straight edge and also your compass to draw perpendicular lines at right angles. And there you have it. This measure is W, this measure is W, and this of course is 2W, and we have our rectangle. Then the third figure we're going to construct third quadrilateral is a trapezoid and basically you just have to remember that the definition of trapezoid is simply a quadrilateral with uh, a pair of parallel sides. So all we have to really do is just draw parallel lines. Since we haven't really specified exactly what the trapezoid will be, we just simply have to draw two parallel lines. So let's start with the bottom. This will be the base and we need to draw a parallel line from there. And as you recall, the way to draw parallel lines is to remember that if you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, the angles will be the same. So what we need to do is we simply want to construct another line going through this transversal that has the same angle. So in order to do so, we're going to start with this vertex and we're going to draw an arc here and an arc here. And then from here, we're going to duplicate that. Again, this will be our new line. It will go through here. So from here, we're going to draw the same arc 
from here and of course here and once again we'll simply take our straight edge our compass and from here we will establish the length like that and up here we'll do the same okay and again what we've done is we've basically formed two similar patterns in which case now we take our straight edge and draw a line from this point through the intersecting arcs and again these are now parallel because again this angle and this angle would be the same if we actually if we drew lines like this we would form two congruent triangles but anyway what we now have is we have two parallel sides and in fact we can actually keep our transversal we'll keep this as one of the other sides of the trapezoid and then pick any point on this line segment here and any point on the line segment below and draw the last side of the trapezoid and we know that these are parallel these are parallel and there we have our trapezoid